revolutionaries have been added to the game. The way revolutionaries works is that a group of people will be selected as head revolutionary, which is depicted by this blue R above your head, and you'll have text in your chat that says you're a head revolutionary. You're tasked with removing all of command from station via death or exilement. The syndicate have sponsored you with a flash that converts the crew to your side. Beware, this won't work on security command or those wearing sunglasses. If you have allowed revolution. So, in your inventory, you will have access to sunglasses and a flash. You're going to want to wear the sunglasses because you don't want to be flashed. And the flash isn't anything special. It is just a normal flash, so any way that you can acquire a flash will let you convert more people. So, flashes have five chargers. That means you can convert five people if you don't mess it up. To convert somebody, it's really simple. You just take the flash in your hand, you turn on harm mode, and anyone that isn't wearing flash protection like a welding mask or sunglasses or set glasses, and that isn't a command member or security, will instantly get turned into a revolutionary upon you hitting them with the flash. They will have this red R above their head, and they will also see your blue R, which indicates you are on the same side. The revolutionary that you just converted is supposed to listen to you, so make sure you either give them good orders, but if you don't give them orders, their overall goal is still the same as yours, to help you eliminate all of the heads of the station, and subsequently security, because they're going to be in your way. Revolutionaries want to kill those that ca they can't convert, and convert those that, well, they can convert. There is additional counterplay to revolutionaries, and they come in the form of mine shield implanters. Cargo can order these for three thousand dollars. Mine shield implanters uh, will make somebody completely immune to being able to be converted, and if used on a normal revolutionary, once the mine shield is fully implanted, they will lose their revolutionary status and will say they have remembered their true allegiance, and they cannot be converted again. If a mine shield is attempted to be used on a head revolutionary, it will just destroy the mine shield. You cannot de uh, deconvert. A head revolutionary they will always be one so security will have no choice but to execute you one other note that is worth mentioning for revolutionaries is that once all head revolutionaries die every normal revolutionary will automatically remember their true allegiance to nanotressin so ultimately the goal uh, for security and those not converted is to make sure all the head revolutionaries die and try not to kill every revolutionary because you can you can save them but uh, anyways killing the head revolutionaries will make the normal revolutionaries convert back to normal, and that's pretty much it. Revolutionaries is a pretty simple game mode. It's a conversion antagonist game mode. Uh, the goal is, is to convert as many people as you can and kill the command, and that's pretty much it for them. Lizards have received a little rework. The most notable things are their diet restrictions now. They can only eat things like meat and apples, so like I can't eat this cheese, but I can eat the meat no problem. And they now pull things with their tail. So before, like if you had a two-handed weapon, you wouldn't be able to drag things, but now they pull things with their tail. So now they can actually drag things while having both their hands occupied, which is uh, extremely useful for many scenarios or many times where your hands are occupied and you still want to drag something. So uh, that's the bigger parts of their work. Uh, they're actually more resistant to heat now, but and there's a few other mod uh, minor notable things, like the, they walk at the same speed as every other species. Now they're not slightly faster. But it's still cool to see and makes them a bit more unique. Diana have received a minor rework, which is actually pretty major for their gameplay, though. They move at the same speed as every other species now, so Diana are no longer these really slow-moving uh, creatures. Certain mobs, like monkeys and gorillas, will now fight back if you hit them. So, like, if you punch Pun Pun, he'll instantly start fighting back. And, uh, so that makes it just a little bit more, uh, it might make you a little bit more hesitant to fight random mobs. They do eventually stop as well, so you don't need to kill them just because you hit them. But you're gonna pay for it, and, uh... Unpun actually does a decent bit of damage. Humanoid species now have passive healing below 20 damage. So if you only have like 5 heat, 5 brute, the way it works is you will now heal 4 brute, 4 heat per minute. So I touched a light bulb, and I was at 5 damage. And if I just re-examine myself, you can see the heat drop in real time. It's not amazing, but for the tiny boo-boos that you get, you no longer need to go to med to get a band-aid. Uh, it's just so that, I guess realistically, you would naturally heal small wounds where, as of before, you just would have to get medical treatment no matter what it was. Game mode weights have been reworked, so now the new values are it's a 20% chance for nuke ops, it's a 50% chance for traitors, 20% chance for revolutionaries, and 10% chance for zombies. Clubs of the North Star have received a very minor buff. They now do 8 damage a hit rather than 7, so that can increase their effectiveness and decrease the amount of punches it would take to actually crit someone. So, it's a small buff, but for how fast it attacks, it's actually pretty significant. 
Rock anomalies have been added to the game, and they are a blue spherical object that will, like, taint the floor near it. And when they pulse, they will create shards and asteroid rocks. At low severity, it's actually really nice because inside there will be these ore crabs. And they're actually mobs that you can fight. And when you kill them, they will drop respective ore of their mob type. And... But they don't always appear, as you can see, but it's just, it's a cool uh, anomaly because A, it directly changes the station's, uh, like, structure, and uh, it's not inherently an extremely dangerous anomaly, but either way, it is uh, really cool looking, and I will show you what the uh, super critical does. So upon hitting super critical, it will explode into hostile mobs, and quite a lot of them, and it will expand its ore uh, quite far. I mean, this is like 10 tiles away, and they do a decent bit of damage. So it isn't all that dangerous before it hits super critical, but you really don't want it to hit super critical because, I mean, just look at the widespread damage. This will take a bit of effort to clean up. Liquid anomalies have been added to the game, and they can contain a very large variety of chemicals in them. And the anomaly itself I will actually have a storage of the chemicals and with if you have chemical analysis goggles you can actually just shift click it and see what's actually in it so for example this has heartbreaker toxin so you could take a syringe and directly draw uh, the heartbreaker toxin out of it so if you have some syringes on hand and you get a useful chemical such as well heartbreaker is definitely more of a lethal chemical than a helpful one but it can still help you in recipes or it can be good for syndicates obviously so upon pulsing, it will actually spit out that current liquid in it. So the heartbreaker toxin, as you can see with the glasses, is spread around in a puddle. And then it will keep generating this heartbreaker toxin. You also have to be very cautious because if it splashes the reagents on you, depending on how deadly it is, it will take the specific type of damage. Thankfully, uh, this is just asphyxiation. And sometimes upon pulsing, it will actually change its reagent type inside. So on the last pulse, it turned into Flog, which is a, again, another very deadly chemical. But anyways, uh, I'll just stand here until this one pulses and show you what happens if you're near the Flog when it pulses. So yeah, it set me on fire, and uh, well, obviously I don't want to be on fire. And it again changed its chemicals to thermite this time. And as you can imagine, it starts mixing on the ground and making very interesting combinations. And I will just show you what happens when it super criticals. Well, I instantly died, but it spreads its most recent chemical around everywhere. And uh, these interesting uh, reagent slimes will come out, and uh, they are depending on whatever reagent they have. So they could be range from very deadly to just, well, a little deadly. Either way, it's a, again, another devastating super critical. It will create mobs that are very difficult to fight, in melee at least, and it will definitely require the janitor to do some overtime. So that is all I would cover, and... I want you to thank all of our maintainers and contributors for all their hard work with the game, keeping it up to date and generally bug free and full of content. You can read the full patch notes either in the Steam uh, post itself or in the YouTube comments down below. Thank you for watching.